if you look yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and you take that time to go, what do I like about myself the most? And you take that one thing that you like about yourself the most and you enhance it. It doesn't have to be your physical being. Yes. And when I take the time each day, I look at myself, I, trust me, I get my ass off that toilet. I look at myself in that damn mirror and I look at myself sometimes and I do a little, oh. Yeah, I just gotta oh. look back at it. Welcome to the Bod Pod, the podcast where everybody is welcome. I'm your host, Rachel K. Grimm, and each week we welcome old and new friends to talk all things body image, self-love, and confidence. This is the Bod Pod. Hey, Bod Pod Squad. I'm Rachel K. Grimm, the confidence coach behind Ditch the Click and your Bod Pod host. Every week from my cute Brooklyn apartment, we're bringing you all things confidence boosting with some of your favorites in the space. And today I have a favorite from BodCon, a favorite from Big Brother. I have Derek Frazier, aka Big D from season 23 of Big Brother, where he was runner up and made history in guaranteeing the show's first Black winner. Derek is the son of Smoke and Joe Frazier and is unapologetically himself always empowering his community and beyond to do the same. Derek, welcome to the pod. I'm so excited you're here. Hello, beautiful Rachel. How are you? And hello to everyone in the BodCon. I'm so excited to be here. I'm yeah. glad that we're getting this opportunity to talk just us. I this know. time and we can really get into it i know so i love your background i love that you're in your little tiny place in brooklyn as you <laughs> said but i love it and this is great and i'm so excited so thank you for the opportunity for bringing me back and of that course. lovely introduction so thank of you course. so much yes it is so exciting to have you back as i said you were on bodcon we had the chance so to much fun interview yes you me and deep tea and we talked all about your experience on your perspective shows and the impact of those and it was such a great conversation but we were like wait no we need more Derek <laughs> like we need more conversation because you have so much goodness to share and we we're like no we need this for the pod so I'm really excited you're here and I want to dive in by talking about you and your confidence and your self-image and how you got to hear because you radiate confidence both on the show, on social, in this chat right here. It just comes off of you. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm glad and, it does because sometimes yeah. I'm like, am I? You know what? As the fans like to say, yeah, they can call me delusional. So I think it's just delusional. Yes. It, it just comes off confident. Yes. Um, but Rachel, I will say this. You know what? The most important thing I learned I think because I grew up with the father figure that I had and the mother that I had, my mother always, she always taught me to be strong. She, my mother always taught me to be powerful. My dad also taught me ways of life. Yeah. So I think growing up in Philadelphia, especially growing up in the hood, you yeah. got to have some type of backbone and you got to have some type of confidence or yeah. people are going to walk all over you. Yeah. So as my life grew, I already grew in the life of understanding the struggle because people think you smoke your Frazier son, you got money, your life is perfect. Not the case at all. Yeah. My mother was a single mother and I still had my dad, but my mom did majority of the legwork growing up with still being struggle, but also yeah. still having opportunities yeah. to have money is a weird type of dynamic. It's a weird yes. balance. And yes. it really teaches you the ways of both lives. So when growing up, you have this idea of how you want to be. And I think I gained confidence because I wanted people to understand that I'm smart. And then I also wanted people to understand that I'm confident. And I was always a big guy. So being a big person yeah. automatically puts a stigma that people are going to look at you like you're lazy or look at you like you don't care or people think that you just let yourself go. And I had the big, biggest stigma because you being Joe Frazier's son and then also being a big guy, it doesn't equal out into people's eyes. But lo and behold, people didn't even know that my dad's like last four sons that he had were all like big dudes because yeah. just ran in the family. It's just how yeah. it is. But the confidence that I had just, I, as you said, which I'm glad it comes off, I think yeah. it just comes from understanding that, and I'm going to say it, yeah. I'm that bitch. Yes. 
just have to remember that. You got to remember that people are always going to mess with you. Being bullied. I never condone bully. Never. Yeah. Never condone yes. people being bullied. I never condone people going through hazing and things like that. Did that transition when I was young help me understand how to stick up for myself and things like that? Yes. Yeah. Because once you get bullied one time and you stand up for yourself and you realize the outcome, you realize if I'm able to stand up to this one bully that's bullied me, what is stopping me from being confident and sitting there and standing up myself to everybody else? We talk about this all the time on this show. I talk about this with people that I coach all the time, that confidence is consistency and it's follow through and it's step by step. And it's proving to yourself that you can do something. And once you did it once, you can do it again and you can do it even better and better. And like you said, having to stand up for yourself, you know, going through that bullying and being like, oh no, I got to stand up for me. You then have to do it again. And it sucks. That is the situation in that you find that confidence, but it does prove to yourself that, hey, I can stick up for me and I can be proud of who I am. And I can say that it's okay to be me. It's okay to look like me. And I don't have to put up with these things that people are saying. So I love yes. that you went there. And I love yeah. too, that you shared that anecdote about your dad. And that was something yeah. I wanted to ask you about because yeah. almost, I don't want to say like living in his shadow, but yeah. In a way, living in the shadow of someone who is iconic, who is notable, right? There yeah. must be this pressure on you, unspoken, maybe that other people have on you and that you maybe in the back of your mind have on yourself that you're like, this is who I have to be because this is who my father is. Yeah. And I, at least from my perspective, right, from an outside perspective, I feel like you've done a great job of defining what that confidence is for you, not necessarily what it looked like for your dad. I will say this. I sometimes have the tendency to give my dad all the credit and I can't give him all the credit. I will say that. Can I we? have to give. Yes. I have to give my mother a lot of the credit. That's why I talked about my mother so much on the show. Yeah. Because through my whole life, my, my mom sometimes feels like she's left out. Yeah, because she's not I the bet. famous one, but yeah. she is famous. She doesn't know it yet. But like mine. She, tell you the truth, she's more famous in all my friends' eyes than me or my dad was alive. No one did give two shits about us. They cared about Sherry Gibson, my mother. Um, but yes. I will say that I do have to give a lot of credit to my mother because she always made sure that I remembered who I was. And she also showed me a lot in life. And my dad, too. They both did. Yeah. But my dad never made me feel like when he sit there and say things like, you should get yourself in the gym and let's work on things and try. Yeah, of course. But my dad also let me live my life, which I'm very thankful for because yeah. I can't imagine if I did go the route of going boxing and trying to follow in his footsteps and not focusing on school and other things out there, things could have been different. Were there times of growing up and kicking myself in the butt and look at all these people that have athletic fathers and athletic mothers and athletic family and then you're damn I didn't really take advantage of that and now look at me now it's so difficult to get off of course when I was growing up at a young age I felt that way I will say that everyone goes through that transition I went through plenty of depression when I was in high school I went through plenty of um, kicking myself in the butt in college which going through a phase of feeling like not I would say not feeling attractive but also I never let people see that I was very good of letting people see the confident me. And there's times that you sit there and you don't have confidence. But what I learned is that if you look yourself in the mirror and you take that time to go, what do I like about myself the most? And you take that one thing that you like about yourself the most and you enhance it. And it doesn't always have to be something, a feature. Physical. It doesn't, thank you so much. It doesn't have to be something a physical. It could be... A, I love the way I talk. Yeah. I love the way I smell. I love the way I think. Yeah. It could be all those other things that are about you. It doesn't have to be your physical being. Yes. And when I take the time each day, I look at myself. I, trust me, I get my ass off that toilet. I look at myself in that damn mirror. And I look at myself sometimes and I do a little. Ooh. Yeah, I gotta so, look back at it. <laughs> yes. And the things I look at myself, I go. I can, I love the way how I'm built. I mm -hmm. love my shoulders. I love my arm. I love that I can look big yeah. without even having the muscle. I love that I can sit there if I need to 
cinch my waist if I need to. Yeah. Pull it in a little bit. Throw it on a couple of spanks. Yeah. Let's pull it in, give it a little bit of touch, yes. and I still look good. And ass yeah. is sitting up and thighs look big. But there's so much that goes with it that you just have to take the time to look at yourself and find those things that you enjoy and then dwell on them. Because we live in a society where people that are big don't get recognized or people that are big don't get the same treatments. The people that are big get charged more money for clothing. There's so much that we still need to work on. We're not there yet. Yes. But what I've learned is just take that time to love yourself and yeah. also showing people that listen i'm okay with being big because your ass come over here and you want to fuck with me just know you go get your ass beat, you know okay? who you're messing with like, just, it has nothing to do with just because my dad is who he is and jim do you yeah. see my size you need to find something to knock me down because yes. you ain't gonna hit me down so just those things that i have learned and i've learned my personality to be to let my personality be my confidence Yes. And then once you see my personality, everything else raise confidence where people look at me and they look at, I always crack these jokes. They go, who is the most attractive man in the cookout? I go, girl, me. <laughs> and Kylan, they look like basic motherfuckers, okay? They don't look like me. They know I am the, that, uh, they know I'm the shit. So yes. when I'm looking at them and I'm like, they get these modeling and they're doing all these shirtless pictures and stuff. I'm like, where's my modeling and shirtless pictures too? Because I'm ready. Yes. Yes. But yes, but it's just you have to have that confidence. But I made all the guys in the house know that just because I'm a big dude don't mean that y'all look better than me because y'all don't. And you have, and I did that. It's listen for everyone <laughs> listening and watching <laughs> us on YouTube. I want you to know I almost told Derek these questions, and he said, "No, I want these mm -hmm. questions to be off the bat. I want them to be fresh." Okay, mm -hmm. it's like you cued me up for this one though, Derek, because okay. I have had this on my list for you okay oh. the house love to refer to you as a floater right yes and kinda, girl let's get into this you seem weak in ways right they try yes yes i want to know and i you answered it a little bit with what you said i want to yeah. know do you think that was based on looks do you think that happens in life too based on looks because of how you look you're seen as weak or less than Rachel, you give me too much freedom, okay? I have put the big D that is a shady bitch in the box a long time ago. But I'm going to give you the real, okay? Okay. I think that people call me, Big Brother likes to call people that don't win comps floaters. Yes. Okay? But I don't think people understand the key word floater. Yeah. A floater is literally somebody, I understand, they can look up the definition it's something that floats, a mm -hmm. deflate, whatever. I mean, inflate, whatever, above water, whatever yeah. you want to call it, okay? The thing about a floater that I have learned, there's people in the game of Big Brother that literally don't win because they want to float to the end. Yeah. That wasn't the case for me, okay? Yeah. I wanted to win every single comp. I was sweating, putting on work, trying my best. You to put win it every in, yes. Game. I never sat there and was like, oh, I didn't want to win anything because I'm trying to make it to the end. No, I wanted to win stuff. And I told people, if I won stuff, I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm throwing out imaginary threats and yeah. no one was taking it. Yeah. But if I got that power, I was going to do it. So yeah. the hard part is that I hate that this was the first season since Jessica. She was a big girl. She's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Love her to death. Yeah. There really has not, and I don't think Jessica is, I want to say a plus size, to be honest, because, yeah. you know, I don't want to compare it to me because I'm a big dude. Sure. Jessica is a beautiful plus size woman. And mm -hmm. I would say for me, I'm a big dude. This is, I'm probably the biggest dude that's ever been on Big Brother to the point yeah. that wardrobe was like, um, That's what I was, wondering. yeah, yes. How do we assess this? This has never happened. But Wordra worked it out, which I was very thankful for. Good. But going on that show and hearing when you come out the house that you're a floater, it basically sounds because I'm a big dude and because y'all see me cook and clean and sleep. But the crazy part is that everyone slept in that house. Like literally, probably some people slept more than me. Yeah. But they didn't even want to call out. And it just sucks that when you use the word floater, especially being a big dude and someone who put it in work because... I, if floating to me means like you didn't do anything. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you didn't put in the work when and you did. And I'm like, I put in the work to 
just because I might have not won, I still had to work my social game off. That is tiring. Listening to Annie and Sammy and this one about their life stories when I don't give a fuck about them. And then you're sitting here and you got to entertain. And then on top of that, you got to play the game. Then you got to deliver messages. Then also you got to make sure you're manipulating. It's a lot of work. Yeah. That goes into, if you're relying on one thing, you have to be on all the time. Yes. And I did that for three and a half months. And the sad part is that when you get to the end, you're like, okay, I didn't win anything. And as game wise, as like vetoes, or sure. I know I won right. a little bit of money, but vetoes right. and comp wise, then you get to the end of the game and you're like, technically, I played a great social game. So I played a Dr. Will game and everyone's like, no, you play a Dr. Will game. Don't you ever compare yourself to Dr. And I'm hello. Between Dr. Will is that he's white and I'm black and we just, I did the same thing, but. I won't call it a Dr. Will game since y'all don't want me to, but I will call it a big D game because Dr. Will didn't win anything because he wanted to make it to the end where I'm right. like, I'm trying to win stuff. Yeah. So I don't think it's good to ever judge people on their look. And I think people should use the word. And I'm not saying that because I don't want to say I'm sensitive. I think that people should use different type of words instead of calling people lazy or yeah. things like that, because yes. calling people lazy or saying you floated your way to the end is not key words that I would use for someone, especially my size, because it's right. like, you're basically saying that I'm fat and I didn't do anything. Cause it's people, reinforcing uh, a narrative, right? Yes. That, yes. that we're over. It's, yes. it's 2023. We're not yes. doing that. I, yeah. I, I want to comment on what you said about wardrobe for a second, because <laughs> I have <laughs> shout out to the wardrobe people at Big Brother. They turned it out. I'm That's amazing. This. If I didn't like something, they were like, boop, boop, hold on one second. Yes. Like they were working tails off. If they like they would try to give me an outfit and I'm like, this is so clunky and so big. Can you like honey taper it in, girl? Like yeah. I'm not wearing this body give suit me a for shape. nothing. Yeah, give me a shake, girl. I'm already doing the bodysuit part for you. Just yeah. give me something a little bit more fitting. Yeah. And they actually took the time to do that. And yeah. even if we were holding up a comp because I wasn't comfortable, or which I did hold up body comp. Sometimes I was like, give me the shit. Let's go. I ain't I don't care how the hell I look. As long as yeah. it's black or dark, I'm happy. And they were always trying to put me in color. And I was like, but <laughs> they were actually great. Wardrobe was fantastic and they were I very love that. good at doing stuff yeah but that i hope that in the future for other shows and don't give me trigger i hope you don't ask me about the shows because that's all i'm about to go off but nope <laughs> moving on moving on we are not you can ask no you can i'm joking please ask me anything <laughs> i'm known for my twitter fingers are very well i think you're queuing me up again right here Derek. like honestly <laughs> because as i said in your intro and as you just yes. said yes. you speak your mind you yes. are unapologetic right? Yes. I want to talk about the pros and cons from being confident and unapologetic in who you are, the pros and cons of what that looks like for you during the show and post show, because I know from our conversation at the BodCon and just in general and just social media in general, it's so sad, but people love to troll. We love to troll. And so I want to talk a little bit about that and how that being unapologetic can be brutal can lead you to spaces of those trolls and things but also how important it is to your confidence and how you I feel like you have left the show though yes sure you've faced trolls and things like that like we talked about with you and deep tea at the botcon like you both talked about that people love to come at you in dms and in the comments and things or just comment on you your body your journey in general but you've almost come out of that even more confident from it so can we talk about that a little bit Yes, absolutely. Let me tell you this. Going into the Big Brother house, that year was coming out of COVID. I was the biggest I'd probably ever been. Yeah. Of course, we all went through it. Yeah. But coming out of COVID and having this horrendous job that I had, and then I ended up leaving that job, and then I was getting myself back into the routine, finding a new job, and I put this tape in a year ago, and just they were just so excited to have me yeah. I think because I was going through a transition where I had a lot of growing up to do yeah. and that was with my family the drama of my family the fights with my roommates and my friends I was having which at the end of the day I never I don't I don't ever it sucked that it happened 
but it needed to happen in order to get to a point in your life for growth and mm -hmm. my part and also everybody else's part. But going into the Big Brother house, I've already had this confidence that I'm that girl. Yeah. And I knew going in there, if I'm just myself, my friends love me. Everyone that ever meets me loves me. So if I just go in being myself, America will love me. You're going <laughs> to okay? win. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. If win if not, in one way or another of the world. I'm going to win in some type of way. Yeah. When you come out the Big Brother house and I had to talk to my two, my, my two roommates, my best friends, as I call them. And when you're, when I'm talking to them, which they did pretty good, they did pretty good. I'm going to give them that. But I remember that moment of just seeing their faces of bitch, you don't know what you miss. Yeah. And they tried their best to, sorry, I don't want to get emotional, but no, they okay. tried their best to not water down it because they always know to give it to me real, but it's I'll like, you. It was, they were so happy for me and they yeah. missed me, of course, but they also were like, they know I'm the strong one. I'm always really the dominant one. I'm always the leader. So they're like, this is the first time where they looked at me like, I don't know if Derek's going to be able to handle this. Oh, that just um, gave me chills. Yeah, they gave me that look where we're like, we're so happy to see you, but you can see what oh, they we're concerned. Kind of went, they're concerned because they're like, okay, so you got your phone back. Okay, oh my God, we're so happy. We like, you can just yeah. tell. And I remember being like, what did I miss? And mm -hmm. they were just like, let's wait until you get home, which never happened. And I remember just being like, I sat there all night reading every comment. And this is probably, can I be honest, this is probably the first interview I have done since being at the Big Brother house where I've talked about everything. So this Thank is, you. no, this is because you asked a really good question. This is yeah. exclusive stuff that yeah. I've never talked about, yeah. not even on my own podcast or yeah. a podcast I did with my best friend a long time ago and yeah. any people I've talked to, it's always yeah. been quick snip questions. It's never yeah. been this in detail, yeah. but that night in the hotel, you know, we couldn't leave the, fi the final three because we got to do interviews the next day. That next, that night I opened my phone and after talking to them, I went through every tweet. Yeah. And when you see, oh, sorry. When you see how ugly, you can see the comments of death threats. You can see the, and I'm going to say what they say. I'm going to tell you, fat ass, lose weight, obese. I hope you drop dead from a heart attack. I can't believe that your dad would let you even walk this earth. I can't believe you're even Joe Frazier's son. I can't believe your mother, like your poor mother had to watch you act like that on TV. You're one cheeseburger away from a So many things that you just see based around your weight. Now, yeah. I could understand the comments of, which I don't want to get into too detailed because that has nothing to do with this, but I can understand the comments and the hate that I got maybe for me being a misogynist. Those were one of the things that kind of made it very hard for me because I'm a gay man. Yeah. I talk a certain way. I yeah. consider myself like one of the girls. So, yeah. you know, very that hard. bitch, come on. So Sorry, bleep me, Bodcon. Bleep no, me, but it came from me, Bodcon. Don't get her in trouble. It came from me. See, I'm bad influence. When I got called misogynist and things like that, it was very hard for me because. The way that I talk at home and how I talk in my gay community and how I talk with the girls and talk yeah. to everybody is the way that I would talk on TV. Yeah. So if somebody made me mad, I'd be like, yeah, I don't like that bitch. That bitch was getting on my nerves. And that's how I talk. But it wasn't appropriate to others. Sure. So when I got that stigma of being a misogynist and then on top of the, the fat comment, I realized I was like upset because I also realized my niece died. I found out my niece killed herself during that yeah. summer. And yeah. then I was, you know what? Handling all these emotions. Handling all these emotions. And I think I just walked out the hotel. It's me against everybody. Only people I feel safe with is the people in, that I've known before coming in this house. And some of them were still questionable. But yeah. the people that I've known for a long time in my life are the only people I can sit there and say I'm comfortable with. And of course, I apologize to... The two women that I care about the most, which was Tiffany and Ozza at the time, because I didn't want them to, because I'm saying this B word or talking around, it it was like, 
that's how I feel about you. It was just, we're in the game. I'm yeah. talking, how I talk at home, if you got on my nerves or I felt some type of way. That's right. just how I talk. And that's how a lot of us talk in the gay community. But yeah. I realized it was inappropriate and I apologize. But the hard part was just seeing those comments about how I look. And yeah. it was already difficult for me because I didn't, me being a big guy, I wasn't able to pack all the clothes I wanted to pack. I had literally both of my roommates like jumping on my suitcase. Like we repacked this bag five different times, girl, to the point that Such like a mood. I had no, I literally had like my best friend Lauren. She's like telling me, like, take this out. You don't need this. I'm like, yo, I need this. She's, we're like <laughs> yeah. we're going through this suitcase multiple times trying to pack everything. So I didn't have a lot of clothes to work with yeah. everybody else. And they only allowed you to bring in one suitcase. Where in reality, you needed like probably two, three. I was going to say three. Like a, At least like one per month. Double. I know. So it's like, what do you do? So when you hear these people talk about your look or how you dress and things like that, it was just very difficult. Yeah. So I just came in ready for war. And I yeah. think that's what made me gain that confidence even more. And yeah. then when I found people that actually loved me for me, I made sure to acknowledge that, but also not that bullshit acknowledging that people do because they think they're, because they're these reality stars or celebrities and things like that. Like I actually take the time to talk to people and get to know them because I don't want people to ever feel like I'm just brushing them off or I don't care. Every person I talk to, I give them my time and I learned that growing up yeah. being who my dad was, but just being prepared taught yeah. me that I think coming out of the big brother house and I've already been through bullying when I was young so when I'm seeing these comments and I went through every tweet and every bookmark yeah. and everything that was saved which I was very thankful that my roommates did do that because it gave me more of a, a vision of what they had to deal with which I can't imagine for their mental capacity what they had to go through because they're trying to talk as me yeah. and then they're also trying to protect me but yeah. they also probably want to attack people. And then sometimes they probably want to attack me for saying yeah, dumb shit yeah. sometimes too. Yeah. So I can't imagine what they had to go through, but I'm very thankful that I had the both of them to yeah. do that because coming out that house, it took me probably a whole year to get back to the normal Derek. But I feel like yeah. I grew so much yeah. coming out of that house doing that experience. First of all, I really appreciate you sharing yeah. so much about that. And I know you said that that's, those aren't necessarily things that you've shared before. And I really appreciate that. And I know that I, I can literally tell in your demeanor that it's a little bit painful to talk about. And I think that speaks to exactly what I was questioning, right? Yeah. The impact, the gravity that like our words have on people. I think what a full circle moment for you to say, hey, you know what? I was bullied as a kid, right? That's literally how we started this conversation was talking yeah. about that and yeah. how you grew from that and the confidence that you grew from that. And now the fact that sadly, so many years later, you go through the same thing, right? Like literally in a different way, but you go through that bullying in the same way. And you once again, rise above it. As you said, it, it takes a year. It's hard, but you do it because I did it before. I can do yes. it again. Like, yes. and also just- but, these, but this is a different type of, this is a different type of mental capacity because it's not that it's like dealing with one person. Yeah. You're dealing with thousands the world. and 10,000, 20,000 of people saying the same thing. You're muting, you're blocking, you're yeah. trying to fight back, you're trying. But I think w the way that I look at it is I made sure- when I got sad or I felt myself falling apart, yeah. I had a really good support system. I had my two best friends I live with. I had all my other friends I can call and vent and they will give me advice. And also I had people to help me. There was times where I felt some type of way and my roommates will put it in words and fight for me at times. Yeah. And, but I was able to have that outlet to be able to vent. So I always tell people, please make sure you have people that you can vent to and be able to show your emotions because over that course of time, when I was able to do that, I still was able to take a step, 
If I need to cry, get myself together, boom, I'm back out here with the fight. Now, what did you say? Let me look at your Twitter. Let me look at your face. And let me, I was able to get myself together. So then I did not want them to know they got me. Yeah. Yeah. I never wanted them to know they got me. Yeah. I would do that with my own personal people if I needed to cry or if I felt down, but yeah. I never let anyone see me like they got me. I would show yeah. you my vulnerable side. I would yeah. show you my real side, but I don't never want them to think that the tweets that they were saying or the things that they were saying about my image or how I look got to me yeah. because yeah. I knew there was somebody, I always thought like this. I always knew there's somebody out there that probably looks like me or feels the same way that I feel that doesn't have a voice and probably dealing with maybe bullying at a young age or maybe dealing with people judging that them at when they get older. And I also know what it's like being plus size and being a bigger person, how we always get this stigma growing up. So I never wanted that to be seen. So that's why when I went on TV, I never wanted to come off, oh my God, I'm so worried about my weight. I think people misunderstood when I would talk about comps versus my weight. The yeah. competitions were very hard all around as of yeah. not not friendly as competitions. Yes. Some of the things that they would do were not good for some of my size or yeah. sometimes some games weren't good for people that were short. Yeah. There's it just it just needs to be thought out better so that yes. everyone has opportunity to win. Or if there's not a comp that's built for maybe someone big, make a comp maybe built for someone big so then everyone else can feel, oh, I'm not big enough to do it. Then you're welcome. Right, that's equal what experience. I Correct, the equal experience. And that's what I complained about. And then for that to be taken as, oh, because, oh, maybe you lose some weight, maybe you can do it. It's, oh, baby, this is a competition show. These reality shows are meant to show everybody. Real people. Reality. Real people. Because if yeah. not, it's not reality, then yeah. we should just call it competition shows that hire paid actors then but that's what they want but if they're going to call it reality then you have to show everybody short small skinny fat whatever you want to say okay yeah but when people said that I remember being like this is why I went on tv and this is why I fight not saying fight back but this is why I speak up and make people uncomfortable because people want me to shut up people want me to say I'm delusional people want me to say that I didn't do nothing people want me to say I'm lazy they want me to sit there and lose all this weight because they're uncomfortable or things like that. And I'm not going to do that. So that's why I fight the way I fight because these competition shows, if they don't look like the real world, then why? That's why I speak a lot. And I have my times, I get on Twitter and I speak my mind, but a lot of people have, I think over the course of time, people have realized we can't give it a big D. He's going to say what he's going to say. He's going to speak his mind. But everything I say, I'm usually bringing facts with. Yeah. If I ever call somebody out, it's because I got facts. If I ever yeah. say something about a show, it's because I have facts. And that's what my purpose was. My purpose was to speak on things that people don't want to speak about because a yeah. lot of people like to hide and not say anything. Yeah. And then also bring awareness to how we're not accepted at yes. times in our community. So I really feel like you did what your mission was to do. Like you said, I went in there wanting to be a voice for people who felt like they didn't have a voice, who are misrepresented or aren't represented at all. And you did that. And what sucks is you took the weight and of like literally the world's opinions on your shoulders for the rest of the community that you were representing. And I think what you spoke on in there, the importance of community like truly, and I'm going to plug the BODCON app here for a second because yes, please do. we launched the BODCON app when we had the conference in March. And it's a space to take conversations like we're having or as we had at the conference and give us a space to talk about things on the daily. Social media can be so full of toxic comments Ooh. and yeah. just toxicity in general. And the app has become a place to have these confidence boosting conversations, but there have been so many real conversations in there. People coming to the table and saying, I've been bullied this way. Has anyone else experienced this? Or I can't find, it. you said earlier about clothes to fit your body correctly and really mm -hmm. have these conversations that are things that so many people are having, everyday people. We're seeing it in these conversations in the app and you are going out there and you're like, no, I am representing these people that are having this conversation. And that's yeah. really hard and really difficult to do. But 
I, I feel like in a way you've stuck it to the man by being that person. When I did my casting tape, I made it clear. I said, I like to say that I have three things against me. I go, I'm black, I'm gay, mm -hmm. and I'm also big. Mm -hmm. And those are three things that are always going to be against me or yep. something I'm going to get judged on or yep. something I'm going to get a comment on. Me going on TV, I'm already making a lot of people already mad with those three things. Yep. Now, I don't have one and I don't have two. I got three, three strikes. I'm out and they're, I'm making everybody uncomfortable that are not fans of either black people, which we already get that a lot, which, yep. which those were a lot of comments to it. Being gay, got a lot of comments. I even got comments from my own community about me, which was hard for me to even swallow. Wow. And then being big. Yeah. So I was already prepared for all that. But me going on the show, I wanted to open that door because Jessica was the only plus size woman that ever did Big Brother, as I saw. And me and her talked and she relates so well because we understand. I was like, I want to go in here and really kick open that door to show that big people can do competition shows too. Yes. And I understand, you know, Hannah said the other day, which is true, Big Brother has a lot of carnival games. It still is a competition show and you got to vote people out and you still got to play, be a player and stuff like yeah. that. But the one thing I learned is that's my reason why I do that. And the sad part is I haven't got my opportunity to do another competition show yet. And I'm still trying to kick down that door, but I really honestly believe it's because I'm a big dude. They're going to sit there and say, yeah, we're going to put you on. We'll let you know. And then we got to do a fitness test. But keyword, that you're fitness big. test is. A fitness test is to, to really see if you're up to their standards. Oh, honey, what's your standards? What's your standards? What's your standards, girl? Because if you're telling me that you think because I might be a little slower on a mile, then mm -hmm. your standard might be, your standard might be, you got to run a mile in six minutes. Oh, baby, my mile is going to be about 12. Yeah. So, and that's okay. And that should be right. And that should be okay. Because guess what? Then where's the strength part? It yes. can't be all focused on cardio. Yes. That's unfair. It's not the it's equal not opportunity. And that's why I speak the way I speak, because I've watched so many of these competition shows and I see so many people getting second chances. I'll let you know in a little bit of tea. I got called to do a competition show. Okay. Made it all the way to the end of this competition show. Three days before I got cut because of the theme change, okay? Which I found it to be very ironic, ironic that they yeah. did that. And wow, it was very sad to see that. And another thing that's made me mad is there was another competition show where someone like me, who you would think come in second place in a competition show would get a second chance to compete because they were that close to the end, yeah. but did not get that call mm -hmm. or that other show. But watch a lot of their other house guests go on this competition show. Yeah. And then you sit there and you question yourself and you go, okay, oh, what makes me different then? What is the di Yeah. But then the winner of your competition show goes on this competition show. So you're like, oh, this person already got $75,000. What? So then you sit there and you go, first of all, I talked to production. I'm friends with half of production. You talk to production, your friends are happy to cast it. You talk to the cast, you talk to production, you hear all these lovely things. Ever need a ever need a resume or a reference or anything? You reach out, you let us know. You're great. You're wonderful with TV. Give them so much content, entertainment, everything. So you're telling me that someone had a strong social game, a spokesperson, very good at speaking, very fun to have fun. Brought you drama when can be, not a lot, but if so, there was a little bit. Also going to entertain the hell out of everybody. Yeah. And also is very strong and also a big person that y'all don't, because y'all don't have a lot of big people on these competition shows. You're not going to give them another chance to compete. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the reason? But you won't say what the reason is, mm -hmm. but you'll say fitness test. You're like, add in the weights. <laughs> right. So give us the weights. I have give learned us a lot. I have learned a lot in this industry. And that's why I'm just at the point now where either i'm not even trying to i would love to do any of these competition shows they can call me yeah. i'll do them in a heartbeat but they're yeah. not gonna call me and i've realized that and the sad part is 
I'm glad that I got an opportunity to do a competition show and make it as far as I did and leave my mark so that somebody else out there who has the same dream could feel like, you know what, Big D was a big guy. I want to be able to do the same thing and they can go in there and do that. But it does suck that even though they're not saying it, you could read the writing on the it. wall. Yeah. You could feel it because when yeah. you look at everybody else, you're like, what makes it different than them? I'm confused. I'm very confused. Yep. I've learned that. I want to talk about shows yep. uh, in a different way. Mm-hmm. When we were on BotCon, we talked with you and Deep Tea together and we said, oh, what a fun crossover it would be to see you on Love is Blind. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about that and love in general. So can we oh. talk a little bit about relationship? Where does your love hey, life mom. Hey, mom, you're going to pick me up now. I'm done. <laughs> Oh my God! Wow. If you're okay, not watching so us on YouTube, please go see the <laughs> always video like that. subscribe. Please always like and subscribe. Yes. I will say this is probably my funnest interview I've ever done. This is so much fun. Thank you so oh, much for being honored. Yeah. This is great. I appreciate. It. These are great questions. These are questions yes. I never get. My questions are always: Did you start the cookout or no? My love life. Yeah. Oh, God, no one's ever asked me this. My love life is what's the word? How can I Your compare face. it to? non-existent girl non-existent <laughs> so we need to see you on love is blind yes i would love let me tell you something the funny part is that was things that i actually said in the big brother house i was like they have never here we go again they have never had a dating show for a big person where they find candidates that actually would love a person right. and give them a chance i don't think i've ever seen a woman do it or a male do it I agree so i was sitting there saying and i said here we go when i'm breaking these barriers i was like wouldn't it be interesting to have a black gay big man have a dating show where gay everyone can come in and watch it but majority of the people are like wow like it's not the typical gay man just like it's not the yeah. typical woman where yeah. she's a size two and she's this is the look and yeah. then you got the gay man that's just like the same type of yeah. you know skinny person and stuff like that i said wouldn't it be interesting to have a yes a different type of feel so <laughs> all the house guests were saying big d needs like a maybe we could do like a big d for love find yeah. love and stuff like that and i said that'll be interesting but i love like girl it is I have apps and I just get on them and talk, but really nothing's coming out of it. I think the, where I'm at is not really dateable. And I'm a picky, I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna pick a bitch. And I'm- As you deserve to be, we need to see a big D dating show. Yes, and we need to see great. a competition show that is working for you and others just like you. I'm hoping, girl, I'm this is hoping. What we're manifesting I- this. We're putting this out there. I'm manifesting, because I will say this. I know people are wondering if you see me doing my youtube show the royalty that means i ain't get the call for that one and the other one i can't even tell you because i don't know because i haven't heard since i got the call last year so i don't know i'm looking towards the trader route yeah so anybody got connections to try to get me on the trader route or as you said love is blind or love show that would be great like i wanted love so badly in the last like i would say probably two years ago i was like crying to my roommates and like having these emotional moments like through like my 20s wanting to find love and find someone i don't know after covid and then like i got older i was like if these motherfuckers don't see who the hell i am at this point and they can't recognize the beauty and what comes everything with it you are yeah. more to love. I can yeah. cook, I can clean, I can pamper, I can do whatever you need me to do. And I damn sure know I am very good. Let me keep that one to myself. But I'm very good at what I do. So other than that's it. But unfortunately, you're strong. Yes, I, you're strong. Yes, yeah. I'm strong. <laughs> and I will say a lot of these guys do. i not saying I don't get hit on. It's just, I have a type. Yeah. And, and that is okay. I can't, I, can't cha- I can't change it. I wish I could. I have one last question for you. Okay, I'm ready. I let you go. Um, This is a question I ask to a lot of our guests who come on the show. I want to know what confidence means to you in whatever that capacity is. Confidence to me, especially, I would say being a part of the BodCon definitely did help me a lot. I love seeing all the different people, different sizes, all the different backgrounds and everyone's story. So I'm very happy to be a part of that. I will say confidence to me is, it's a feeling. Yeah. And it's a feeling where when you walk into a room, 
everybody's looking at you because you know why because you are that girl okay and you have to remember that you have to remember that it is a feeling it is something that oozes off your like your motion on how you walk and how you talk and how you hold yourself and mm -hmm. as i would say for the women how you flip your hair or how your clothes hug your curves and yeah. i'll say for the men just how you know your skin feel or yeah. how you feel in your arms and your chest and your shoulders and mm -hmm. how you sit up or things like that that's what confidence really is confidence to me is all those things and it comes with just sometimes if you feel like I don't have that confidence and you sit there and you're like, I don't know, I feel not confident. Just sit your ass up, take that time to look at yourself, find that thing that you love, keep saying it in your head. And then when you walk out of that mirror or whatever you're looking in that phone, you just remember nobody's in my way and I'm running every single thing moving forward and no one's ever going to stop me because I'm what? that girl Derek <laughs> yes that is it so well said thank you so much for that no thank you for this conversation this was much needed I had a rough day after work so I need to go on this LinkedIn and keep, I love it <laughs> get this my head to look in. before I let you go yes shout out all the places we can find you oh. anything that you want to put eyes on give it to everyone all my, my Twitter, my Instagram, my TikTok. Okay, wait. My Twitter, my Instagram is the Derek Frazier. My TikTok is the Derek Frazier, but there's an underscore at the end, of course. Of course. Underscore. Okay. Because I did have the Derek Frazier, but I couldn't get rid of it because it was hooked up to my phone and I hate it. Other way. The Derek Frazier underscore on TikTok, the Derek Frazier on Instagram and Twitter. Also for my YouTube show and podcast that I have with Hannah and Tiffany that I drive insane each week. We just got to our sixth episode is the yes. Royal Tea. So yes. by com, please feel free to come and watch us on the Royal Tea. And I don't have anything coming up right now. Right now, I'm just done with life. Yes. As I always tell people, I'm always looking for a job. Yes. I'm definitely looking for a job right now. Let me get paid some money because I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. This place is not it. But other than that, I am, I'm in Philly. So if you ever come to Philadelphia, please, Rachel, hit me up. Let me oh, know. Yeah. Yes. I think I'm coming to New York soon. Am I coming to New York soon? I was going to say, vice versa. I am come to coming New York. to New York. Yeah, Let I am me coming know. to New York for a survivor event. And then I think I'm going to New York when my roommate gets his tattoo. If he goes by himself, I'll go with him. If he's not, then I'm going to stay at home. Hit a girl up. Let me know. I love your positivity. You guys are great at the BarCon. This yeah. is such a great experience. And there's so many people out there, I think, that need this. And I hope yeah. you just keep spreading the word and keep doing this because you never know what person's out there that's, like, feeling down or not feeling confident. And I think these this is a perfect platform and a safe place for people. Yeah. So please check out the BarCon. Make sure you like and subscribe comment give them some love give them a follow and trust me i feel like this is going to be really taking off pretty soon so thank you up. so much for that derek you, like Absolutely. i said i didn't prep you on these questions and you're just no. like thing after thing you were on it you even gave our sign off i appreciate yes. that so much <laughs> yes it was so good oh my gosh derek thank you so much thank you for your kind Absolutely. words for your honesty just always being real being yourself i appreciate you so much i know that so many people listening are going to be so positively impacted by this episode too seriously thank so you so if so you are listening and you love this episode please as derek said give us a like a subscribe rate review the pod so that we can come back here every week and have confidence boosting conversations just like this one if you're listening on spotify and apple thank you so much if you're listening and watching on youtube thank you so much if you're not watching us why not we're having fun. We're smiling. We're talking with our hands. It's a good time here. So be sure to check us out there. Be sure to give us a follow over on Instagram where we're having conversations like this all the time, posting all the confidence boosting content. We're at the VODCon on Instagram. And of course, check us out on the app where, like we said, we're having some deep conversations, fun conversations, and we're getting ready to have our five-day challenge. So be sure to find us there. And until next time, we'll see you. Bye.
Thanks so much for joining us today on The Bod Pod. We release new episodes every week and we're available on all podcast streaming platforms and now YouTube too. Subscribe to our channels to be the first to know. Want to talk all things body confidence, enter amazing giveaways, and hear updates about The Bodcon 2023? Find us on Instagram at The Bodcon. My name's Rachel K. Grimm, and I'll see you next week.